We're good. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Mate, uh, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's cool to be here. And, uh, Thanks, man. Yeah, Welcome. I'm looking forward to having a chat and drinking some Michelada. Michelada. <laughs> Michelada. Yeah, 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 we, nice. we might start throwing some Spanish words out there. So let's see yeah, where you go. Well, I can it usually gets better after a few drinks, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you that. Not, not always for me, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see. You, you can correct me if I mess anything. No, no worries. Sorry. If it's I mess it, it's part, it's part of it. It's part <laughs> of the episode. We do, we do a lot of Spanglish here as well. So good. Yeah, that's my. Yeah, I'm fluent in that. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely my proficiency. Man, we uh been chatting for a while now, but um, I guess uh, one thing that I was telling you before is that I can come in and try to explain what is it that you do and who you are, but I think it's best if it comes from you ultimately. Um, so yeah. I, was, I was keen <laughs> to know, like, who are you? Uh, great question. Uh, I still grapple with this but i think um the probably the reason that i'm here is like i'm a creative i work as an artist and an illustrator um aside from that i am uh yeah australian dude <laughs> indian really heritage really fast, nice. right? australian dude <laughs> indian heritage um nice. yeah moved to australia when i was like 10 i live here in melbourne now via a lot of other places and and cities i've had the pleasure of like traveling and you were saying that at the conference right mm. yeah uh, we we met at the brisbane conference at the, the design, design conference, conference. Yeah, that's right design that's conference. yeah yeah the first time in brisbane for me and then you were saying that you were you've been traveling quite a bit before coming back to melbourne like how many places you, yeah you, you can remember you've been i to took the, the <laughs> scenic route home um yeah definitely oh yeah so it's been three or four places so yeah i've just really liked kind of being an expat for a really long time mm. nice. and yeah. so that's why it's sort of dragged out for so long so yeah went from melbourne and then new york for four years and then tokyo for two years and then amsterdam for four years and now that's like back very here. very creative uh series mm. right yeah i th i think to be honest like any city has the capacity to be creative they are absolutely you know you know international cities they're, they're massive hubs for places but i think one of the cool things about being in these countries is that it gives you this exposure to like this culture that's not immediately mm. uh, native to you and around totally. you constantly and i think especially like places like um you know europe or even the united states you know you have this access to all these like different areas that yeah are, you know really really close to travel to so i think exposing myself to that is was probably the biggest reason for doing a lot of that travel yeah and yeah, it's man. and it's been it's been really nice to come home though i think um mm. melbourne's a, australia's a really cool country it's a beautiful know, place. Absolutely. i mean you know uh, you were you were born in sydney no, no, I was born in Delhi. I'm, oh, I was born in, in India. Why yeah. do I keep coming back to Sydney? I think I mentioned that. I'm, I'm from from Sydney, oh, so I grew okay. up in Sydney. Went so to hey, like nobody on this table is from Australia. Not, no, I guess no. no. But yeah. that's also that's yeah, also Venezuela. the joys of Australia, Mexico. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, actually. Yeah. All immigrants, we share that. Yeah. It's it's interesting because, um, you know, I feel like once you've done that first step uh, to move to a different country it's a lot easier to then go yeah. and you know start from scratch let's say let's call it that way um it's more of a common idea in your mind you know mm. i feel like if you're not used to moving to a different country yeah. it can be a bit jarring for people i think i agree i think the first time is like definitely the most jarring like i don't know how it was for you guys i think for for me it was like easier every time we did it because i had someone to do it with so i had my wife yeah, and right, she yeah. was like if she's game, like it's, it's so different if you're trying to move to a new country by yourself and you you're don't right. know anyone. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. You don't speak the language. You don't know like what the basic things are. I don't know how it was. I did wasn't. You, you guys. Did, did you did you travel to these other countries speaking the language? No, did not you at all. Japan yeah. is like no. Didn't know anyone. Didn't speak the language. Just throw yourself in the just Japan. just exactly no. yeah. I think and it was, I mean. It was an amazing experience. I learned the most about myself living in Japan. Yeah. Like definitely right. introduced to those like limits and uh, okay. comfort zones were constantly being challenged. And mm. yeah, there's a lot of culture shock as well. But I think- were you um, in one, uh, Where were you in Japan? In Tokyo. Yeah. Yes. Did you go to okay. the fish market? 
Oh yeah. Is it as crazy yeah. as Tsukiji. they do? Oh yeah. So they've they've so Tsukiji fish market is amazing. The thing is, like in the lead up to the Olympics, they relocated it. Oh. So they it's not in um sort of near. How can you relocate a fish market? <laughs> They did it because it was. It's been around for a really long time. That like old fish market, yeah, and it yeah. had all the character of like all these really charming, like charming and sometimes aggressive, aggressive. Uh, <laughs> fish <laughs> mongers. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's a sight and experience. Those stories about like you have to get as a tourist, you have to get up early and get there early. Oh yeah, and it's like limited capacity and. I. It's, it's not a limit. Yeah, it's like this limited capacity if you want to go to like the auctions, like the tuna auctions, Sorry, which yeah. are like the, right. the big but ones. Yeah, buy yeah. yeah. They go for millions, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of yen, yeah, but like it is, it's insane. Like, yeah, yeah. people spend a lot of money on million yen, you said tuna, tuna, yeah, millions of yen, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nah, but it like depends. I mean, amazing, like, it's such a great place to learn about like quality of mm. ingredients. Like, I don't know, like, I love yeah. food specifically, and my yeah. goodness, it was like great the most to fun be to be. I mean, most fun to like to eat there, and like <laughs> it seems like Japan as well. I mean, food wise. Uh, if you think about it they've been uh outside japan and you know everywhere you go in the world you can eat you know japanese food and it's so yeah. well known yeah that's one thing that fascinates me about their culture is that it kind of you know whether it's food whether it's television uh anime mm. like there are so many things about japan that have gone out of the world been exported to mm. you know like even yeah. growing up i feel like i've got some japanese references you know for sure in, in my Absolutely. life you know, early growing up so it's like it's just fascinating to me it's just that it's like it's such a weird it's such a not weird it's like such a fascinating thing because it is like geographically speaking like quite a small country and yeah like to have so many kind of so amazing yeah. things of notoriety like i think of karaoke which is like just such a fun yeah. thing exactly. like, you know? exactly. i can't, I can't yeah. get on board with karaoke no yeah. it's so much fun just, it is good it, it, it is i didn't like it until you know i got introduced to it and i was like oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just, uh, we're sorry. going to karaoke after this we yeah, yeah, okay. yeah done. Okay. but you know I'm, I'm curious as well because um obviously you, you don't just go there for um you know short periods of time it sounds like you know you've been spending years in each one yeah. of these, uh, cities and countries um it w was there an underlying reason apart from just like exploring? oh yeah yeah i think like i think i love traveling to new places and like putting myself in different positions but you know if you have the luxury of being able to stay somewhere for longer and to experience yeah. a place like a local mm. like that is to me the most exciting way to travel is to right um you know is to experience a city like a local um mm. for me what i look forward to the most whenever i visit a city is not necessarily to like check off the like must-see okay. church or like right. the the like or museum the that stuff. you i mean yeah it sounds really wanky and like oh look look at how like cool i am yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. i honestly I, it's more that i don't have the patience to stand in no, line to get into yeah. I get, it. get in I get to it. see like yeah. uh, like a like a landmark that it's, I'm mm. sure it's really impressive, but I think what fascin fascinates me the most about these places is the people because yeah. it's, you know, they have a different routine and a different yeah. lifestyle yeah. and, um, you know, everything in their day to day is different. You know, sure, mm. we still have, you know, a similarly structured day where we might have, you know, a couple of meals a day, but the food that they eat and the people that they interact with and the yeah. the, yeah, the, like the like means local. of transport and the 100%. things that they see mm. like those are the things like that are you could be an airbnb ambassador man that, that's, <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what they say yeah 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 like not sponsored yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah have you ever worked with them I have done a project with them. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part of your culture was to keep talking about the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still, still contractually what, what obligated. You, yeah, what did you do for I that? did, um, it's actually really cool. It's like when I was living in Tokyo, um, uh, and it was with uh, uh, Koto, who's a, a branding agency, and they uh, commissioned a, a series of uh, travel posters nice. um, inspired okay. by like, the vintage travel posters, you know, okay. those like oh, ones that yeah, you see yeah. in a travel agent. Yeah. Um, you oh, know. With the, uh, yeah. And so I was really lucky because it was while I was living in Tokyo and they were like, we'd love for you to create a poster about Tokyo. And nice. Um, Who said that? The, the Koto studio? Yeah, Koto. Like, is there like, like, like a happy? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, them. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're really cool. Um, they're, uh, they're, How do you come across them? 
Was it, oh, how did they come across you? I I couldn't tell you. I think, you know, part of it was um, luck, but probably more um, sincerely <laughs> part of it was um, a, a really good friend of mine, Ravi, uh, was working there as a designer. Yeah, right. And might have put me forward. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think, um, you know, the, sort of, yeah. Yeah. The, the rest is, yeah, sort of history. And then, you know, this, they, it, it kind of went on to have a really nice life about it, this, this poster, which, um, yeah. you know, it was, it was, yeah, really touching to be able to create, um, a poster for the city I was living in. Of course. And yeah. I think also because I'm not, you know, I, I felt really self-conscious about it at the time because I'm like, I'm not Japanese, but mm. at the same time, I was also in a really unique position that I could convey Tokyo as an expat or as a visitor yeah, and course, kind yeah. of, you know, yeah, show yeah, that. You, you kind of get yeah. both views, right? Mm. Yeah. Like visitor, but also you've been living there. Exactly. Yeah, your yeah, skills exactly. to work. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have this amazing uh, poster. Well, especially yeah. in the way that you're yeah. also like embracing the city, you know, you're embracing it as a local. Exactly. So, so yeah. you do get a different view. You're not going to go with the cheesy stuff. You know, you're not going to do a poster <laughs> about the cheesy yeah. stuff about the city. You know? I hope not. So I naturally, not. it's like, it's a perfect Now I'm like you. thinking about what I did and hopefully it's not <laughs> cheesy. I'll, oh, have to no, I'll, have to really. ask you guys, I'll have to ask you guys after. It's like, yeah. Man, what is it like, Mount Fuji? That's it. <laughs> yeah, Mount Fuji and some cherry Full blossom. <laughs> and uh, no, it was uh, it was actually really cool. It was like an alleyway, and hmm. so um, Japan's like sort of famous for these really narrow narrow alleyways, and oh, they have like stone. all okay. all these like signs that oh, sort of yeah. sit out yeah, amongst yeah, yeah. one another and overlap. Yeah. And so it was like a a kind of collage of different neon yeah. signs of different signs for food and. It was like a karaoke sign and uh, something for any, like, Odin. Nice. And um, Easter eggs there that you left? Like your name in Japanese or something? Uh, you know, I think that would have been a bad idea if I decided <laughs> to sneak that in because I think they would have been like, what's that? Because it was. Yeah. It <laughs> went on to be on their... Um, so the, 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 the CEO of Airbnb okay. used Ryan it in Kesky. this like... Yeah, he used yeah. it in this like, present, presentation on yeah, stage right. for one of their big... I don't know, announcements, oh, right. and there yeah. it was. So I think they would have been a little bit you know, upset. When, when, they, when they don't give me data, so um, when Alan and I are designing something and then they don't give me the, the real name or the real whatever, Okay. for numbers, I use like key dates for me. Okay. So I put my birthday yeah. there. So, okay. so yeah, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I got to mark up a screen of a phone, <laughs> it's going to be birthday. your... It says like 1804. Okay. Or if I run out of numbers, I start putting in like... Maybe Alice's uh, birthday or my wife's birthday. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, do that, birthday. I do that every now and then. But only, only I laugh about the but, joke. Yeah, it's like a joke on me. You know? Nobody, nobody it. finds out. It's like know? a little. Yeah. But you know, I've confused yeah. before, like in front of clients, like presentations, like, oh yeah, that's cool. Nobody, nobody is referring to that. I was like, yeah. oh, by the way, guys. Just so you know, this well, is like three presentations. Yeah, this, like there's a yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, I think yeah. there's definitely things that you should who put in. Does that as well. Well, I I did put in in that case because a really good friend of mine um, who like is Japanese and was living in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, his family owns a Odin uh, shop, which is like a fit like it's a traditional Japanese okay. like fish cake stew. Right. And right. so one of the signs that I did was a was a Odin. Or sign and okay. I was like, oh, that's that's, that's you know unique. uniquely j yeah. old school Japanese as well. It's nice. like it's not super common for you know a lot of people will come to like uh, will go to Japan and have like you know teriyaki chicken and katsu mm. and, yeah. and mm. okonomiyaki, but mm. oh, not as many people have odin, which is like a very old fashioned like Japanese um, kind of uh, style of food. So yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, okay. embrace this idea <laughs> of like. Putting in a little the connection, next Nike project, a little bit just, about you in there. You know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now like, I'm, I'm thinking, what would I put in? in? I'm yeah, I'm really, yeah. yeah, I don't think Nike's going to commission what, anything else. What are you working there. on now? Um, a lot what, of things. What can you say? What did you sign on with, with blood that you? Can <laughs> this is the, well. This is the thing. Like to be honest, most projects just come with that, and I think. Yeah. Inherently, a lot of people are very protective about that, and I respect that. Um. But I think most recently, it's definitely been a kind of time where I'm like reassessing my own style a lot mm. uh, and trying new mediums. I think for me, what I try to do like every year is try and like challenge myself and learn something yep. new or, mm. or um, you know, try a new technique or, or just question is it something. Is digital? Usually, yeah. Question. But lately, it's it's been like quite a little bit more 
you know, tactile and yeah. wanting to take things off the screen as much as possible. Um, mm. So yeah, I think I think I think that's always my objective. Is like as much as the the production side and making things is always going to be digital. It's always nice. Or it's always ideal and preferred to take things off the screen as much as possible yeah, it makes mm. sense, yeah. because it gives them this presence you know and i think because i constantly work digitally any opportunity i get to have a physical tangible version of the work yeah is, yeah because i think yeah. Ali, Ali mentioned this previously and um your style oh, no we yeah. talked about it before the evolution of Karan, right the style mm. well i call it evolution you might call it something else but no i call and, it and well. off the camera you know we're, we're talking about you know back in the computer arts uh, magazine the computer style arts that, oh yeah <laughs> yeah the, that style that it was now we look at it, it might be a bit cheesy but you started mm. somewhere there yeah and then you move into something more uh simplistic mm. minimalistic and now you're using a new technique um but how do you man, like you keep evolving right but you obviously some people start mm. looking at your work for the style that you have and then all of a sudden you're like switching yeah up, right? I'd, I'd say like i say it's like a there's a couple of approaches here where it's like some of my favorite artists and like illustrators keep doing the same style and I love that about them mm. you know one of my favorite artists is a Dutch artist named Para and mm. he's kind of known for using um, similar kind of color palette these blues and these reds and these whites and um, I love him for that um, but yep. for me I think one of the things that sort of defines me is that I'm immensely like impatient and mm. I think I constantly have to figure out a right. new way to do something or mm. if, if ever anything technically speaking spe like feels formulaic and the journey feels too too <laughs> too too easy or right. too mm. too set in stone then I'm like oh let's take like a right turn here and see what I'll happens take the next step so yeah because it's interesting as well I think about uh, you and I recognize your style you know um, but I feel like you know, you kind of in this process of evolving as well. Yeah, you're still keeping some kind of, you know, pattern, some kind of language to yeah. your work. You know, do you feel like you you have to be restricted to that, in a way, and kind of be honest to the work you mean, that like you started doing? Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really good question. Yeah, I think like, um, oftentimes I'll get like asked to do a specific kind of thing and. You know, they people, send you a screenshot of your Instagram. It's like, hey, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you know, for in, you know, for instance, like a style that I did a long time ago, which people yeah. like, I'm not really doing as much anymore. And yeah. people might be like, hey, can you like, mm. can you Computer do something like, like, like that? Style, <laughs> can you do you know? this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, sometimes it's like, sometimes I like, you know, I usually consider it based on like what the ask is and yeah. who it's for and what it's for and why and yeah um yeah sometimes you do feel a little um pigeonholed i think but that's yeah. just human nature you know people just it's just something innately human that people mm. want to classify people and say oh that's the person who would be you know yeah. for bright colors or for, you know in my case it's like oh pattern or um yeah. a simple illustration or something minimal or something yeah. bold or something colorful and, and that makes sense, you know? I think that when people commission illustration or any kind of work, they're like, okay, I need the best person suited for this brief. Yeah, um, totally. Does it make breaking out of that challenging? Absolutely. But I think that, you know, it has to be, it, it would, I think, you know, taking a step back to like, you know, this question of evolution, I think like, while some of my favorite artists might have a consistent visual style, conceptually their ideas have always evolved and mm. so they've probably started dealing with different ideas. Yeah. Whereas conversely, like for me, I would say I still kind of try and conceptually deal with similar ideas, but the visual language yeah. has changed. Mm. Um, it must be hard as well because you mentioned one of your... Um I think it's a blog or something. I'm going to try to quote you here. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. How old is this? No, no, no. Awesome. You're like, I haven't kept yeah. a blog in a long time. <laughs> no, uh, no, I think it's going to resonate. You say something like, um, about being proud of putting your name on it before it yeah. goes out. Mm. Yeah. Something along those lines. Mm. Yeah. And that really resonated with me. I was like, that's very powerful. You know, like, 
you want to put something out there is it good enough then you gotta mm. ask yourself would i put oh that's it would i put my name on it mm. you said, yeah you said, like, you said karen i remember this. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, i'm in trouble now because yeah. i think i think then, like yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've maybe like i don't know like how do you guys feel about this like you i think maybe i've like softened a bit because i know that not every single thing I make is going to be a banger, you That's, know? Man, and I think you just got to... And then and there the are just... Thing, I'm saying, like, everything yeah. you put out there makes me feel bad about what I put out there. <laughs> no, it's not like that. <laughs> but it's, I think it's if it's more just accepting the, like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Just draw a line under it. Yeah. This one didn't work out like you thought. <laughs> That's very tricky, though. I yeah. still, I still uh, you know, fight with that idea a lot because uh, I guess, you know, at some point you just have to give and you have to be okay with just letting go yeah but at the same time i feel like that moment kind of never arrives you know even when i release something it's out there in the world i'm still questioning it, yeah. and, and mm. i'm still kind of you know um giving myself a hard time for not Do doing you, specific are you things, the kind of you know? person to like take the work down after like after a couple of months you're like oh, i hate that i'm gonna take it down i don't want people I to never, see that i never take it down but do you you Did you ever take? I, I never, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> very <laughs> occasionally I, yeah. I will be like, I just don't. Uh, yeah, why I'm, did I put that out there? Not, not why did I put that out there? I was like, what was I thinking? I get, I get it, but I'm trying to be less precious about it as well. Okay. Okay. Now, like, I think. Nice. Is that like social pressure or more like yourselves thinking I, about the work and being like that cannot be associated with me? Anymore? I think the yeah, probably the original rationale behind taking it down is mm. the social pressure and then eventually maturing to the point that you're like not everything's going to be perfect like right. allow yourself to have those in there Cut yourself some slack. because yeah. you know not every time you're going hey, you're not going to nail it every single time yeah. and i think i think it, you know it serves as like uh, and I'm thinking purely about uh, social media in this sense. Yeah. It's like I think naturally it should, it's a, it, yeah. it should be yeah. a, like a sort of sketchbook. I think yeah. it's actually funny you say that because that's interesting. Excuse me, you can edit that out. But no, but the yeah, but yeah. the like my one of my like the last full time job I had, and I remember it was like my my like leaving party, and my creative director Jonathan uh, said to me, he's like, you know, it's really interesting to see you like pushing your work out there on Instagram and yeah. I was I said oh this sometimes it's really bad though he's like yeah but it's like nice to see that you're human you know it's oh, nice to right. see that you're mistakes, yeah. it's nice to see that you um you don't always get it and that's yeah. that's part of the exploration and that's part of the journey is like sometimes you will take a wrong turn mm-hmm. yeah and and but the, the, the okay. thing is that you that's part of the journey that's yeah. part of the exploration um I guess the yeah, so there's no need to like sort of hide it and masquerade mm-hmm. that every single thing is yeah, going to be it's going to be perfect. Perfect. Um, sometimes it's going to be shit. And yeah. Um, yeah, even lately, it's like oh, you know, measuring the the value of some work based on okay. how many likes or things that it gets isn't oh well. Like it's, how it's, many it's, ether it's, you get for that one? I mean, it's, it's 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 a shit way of measuring metrics because yeah, you know you like you might just like spend a really nice amount of time exploring Mm. this this thing Mm. and then be really proud of it and then having you know a a social media platform decide that this work isn't worth anything it's it's like not right and i think you know Mm. oftentimes it's like oh the it's maybe it's the algorithm that isn't right and it maybe it still is a good work and i think that yeah you know setting that aside especially if you work like independently especially if you don't work mm. immediately mm. around you, other peers man, you were saying before like you used to work out of your place up until like a few weeks ago mm. yeah but, and then i mean i think we all did but at the end of the day what i'm trying to say is that a lot of people are part of a team or an agency yeah or, you know like a network whereas you is just you and uh your ipad or you know you, <laughs> yeah. whatever you work on you, my friends your best yeah. friend yeah. 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 yeah yeah what do you, what do you, use, you use an ipad right I thought you were no, I, oh, did you say no, 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 yeah, like a wake on, but like, I mean, you know, before I came, moved back to Australia, I had like a shared, worked in a shared studio, and that was really nice, I think, I think it's more like for me, working in isolation, mm. <laughs> it's, it's actually funny, because um, I like working around other people, because they keep me kind of, like, 
in check and like mm-hmm. accountable exactly mm-hmm. where you know they're working so i'm like i should work whereas working mm-hmm. from home is like it's just you and against you yes yeah. like the fridge and yeah <laughs> youtube and, and you find so many things to do at home exactly exactly just getting the, the <laughs> views up um yeah yeah so i think yeah i think it's like it's tricky yeah and because i work in isolation and i say isolation you know i have you know there's people who are on my team and you work mm. with massive brands right so um Apple and Nike and Airbnb you said before. Sure. Uh, recently, I think uh, you share at LA Times. Uh, yeah, no. that, that you you work with uh, with the design director as well. And um, yeah, you have to manage expectations from those established brands. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm assuming here, but this is why are you here? Are we asking you? Yeah. How, like, how do you manage that and uh, yeah. also keep it true to your to who you are and your your style and you know. I mean, I imagine it's very much similar to you guys. Like, if you get a project in, you know, it's... I think every project is an opportunity for you to... I don't know. It's like, it's a test. It's like a race. And Mm. you're like, what's the... what? What's my time going to be on this race? And, you know, how good is it going to be? And I think I treat kind of each of these opportunities as like a new opportunity to do something good and... I always find like the most challenging like stage to be the first part, which is like you're sussing each other out. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have this when you yeah. when you work I where you're like, yeah. I'm trying to manage expectations, like you said, yeah. I'm trying to understand what their expectations are. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, that's sort of the the, the, the the you mean like the first couple of meetings or yeah, presentation. Mm-hmm. The first presentation is the barometer where you're just like, mm. Oh, I've done this and they were expecting this or yeah. they they share feedback it's like this and and as well like, like on a on a virtual meeting like yeah camera off mic off <laughs> you don't know what the reaction is yeah you know, you're doing a yeah job. it's like it's yeah okay it's Where cool it's going? Like, <laughs> um yeah so i think it's always that that's that initial um it's the that first it's the yeah. first blind date in a, in a way yeah. it's like yeah. it's like i don't know you both like, right, know what the what outcome's gonna They've be. asked me to come up with ideas. My ideas might be awesome or awful. And um, sh- sure, like, I get used to it by doing it more often. Yeah. But it's yeah. still the, like, it's still the, like, most challenging. <laughs> it's still... I think, I think that's Simon. Thank you very I much. I think that's been great. It's been great. Uh, <laughs> Let's get around the shots. Okay. I love that he was like, hey, make sure to turn off all your phones I and know, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always a cameraman. Yeah, he, he, he told the kitchen to stop yeah, yeah, Hey, guys, yeah. stop cooking. Turn, so, turn the music. Turn the music. We'll pretend like nothing happened. You know? What happened? Yeah, happened? I don't know. I have no idea. But, um, no, I think it's like, I always use it as an opportunity to like, yeah, it's a it's the new relationship and yeah, and, and it's exciting. I find that very exciting sometimes because it's like it's a blank canvas, right? E- exactly. And uh, I think both parties are interested in a good outcome. Yeah. And then you know, I don't know if this happens to you, but uh, someone as as soon as someone gives you a brief, do you get ideas like come into your mind right away? Some uh, sometimes, sometimes I think. Um, okay. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I do, um, especially if I'm on a call, like, especially if I have yeah. a call and they're like, and they've, you know, shared visual references and they've got ideas and they're like, this is the direction oh, we want to yeah. take it in. They start sparking And they something. start explaining yeah. the brief to you. Yeah, which is, but like, interestingly, like, I, I've been doing a lot more editorial work, yeah. which I find really challenging. And I, that's why I'm like, almost forcing myself to do it because it's putting You're, myself in mm-hmm. like a, a position where was this, you really was this have printed, to. By the way, like this piece of work that the LA Times. Times. I think that yeah. was digital. I think that one was okay. digital. Um, was the, you've been sharing some, like the Peel one. Oh, that was the New York that, Times. Yeah, yeah, and that one. I mean, you obviously had to switch RGB to CMYK, right? Uh, or, no, they. I think they they managed a lot of color. Did, but, yeah. but it's still your super bright colors. It's completely yeah. different on screen as opposed to on paper. Yeah. So that's. Uh, that must be like you have to make peace with that as well. No, no, no I mean that, that's yeah, that's in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, a small battle to fight. <laughs> like it's like it's more just like when you have an idea that you love and you're like yeah. really going into bat for it. Um, but I think part of it is like it's 
well, not part of it. A big part of it is 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 the collaborative nature of, any, of a lot of these things. Yep. I think it's like, mm. you know, communication is always key. It's like you're feedbacking with an art director or totally. a mm. client or a brand, and yeah, I yeah, I think I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the direction and working with people, and you know. Oh, Obviously, good. they're stepping in and they're like, okay, we think you're good for this and we want you to take it in this direction. And um, That's a good starting mm. point. Mm. Like, I, I don't like open briefs because... Yeah. Um, oh, you don't? I don't like open briefs right, because yeah, I right. think it's just too... It's too broad. And yeah. I think oftentimes, if I, when I get an open brief, I, you know, then you, send, then you often share it with a client and yeah. they're like... Oh, I, va- I imagined something completely different. And yeah. I was like, well, that's why I asked. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's so that. vague that, yeah, you know, exactly. you know it, yeah. it's, it's actually yeah. hard to set an expectation on something that's so vague. Sure. Because at the end of the day, it's your interpretation of the brief. Right? Absolutely. And then the other party that's waiting for your work yeah. should have no expectation yeah. besides just whatever you think is best. Absolutely. But it doesn't happen that way. You know, yeah. like that's more the theory on paper. I feel like it kind of goes the other way. But I, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, I think, but I think that this is again, like the, the gift of this first round is this like meeting yeah, of the yeah. minds in the middle Assessing all and the, you're like, you, you like went crazy. Guy or like yeah. five no, no, I, I usually do multiple. I, mm. I, I try to come up with a couple of different approaches to a, to an idea. Yeah. Um, so it's it like doesn't like necessarily one idea, but different approaches as opposed to five different ideas. No, it might be five different ideas. Oh, it wow. might be so creative. <laughs> it, no, but it might be five different. Like I think, because I think there's like, you know, especially. I don't know. Okay, with a campaign, it's it's quite easy to mm. interpret something in a range of different ways because, you know, you might decide to focus on one detail and make that the kind of crux of the project, yeah, right. and then build a world around that. And mm. any project might have three or four of these you know, deeply yeah. rooted ideas that mm. you can build a world around. And mm. it's it's all about emphasis. It's like, well, what is the kind of strategy for the client and what are they trying to push? Or yeah. what is the main message of this campaign? And mm. yeah, I think that's that's where it is. It's it's just, uh, you know, weighting the emphasis in different places yeah. and then creating concepts based on that. I, I don't know why my mind went there, but it'll be funny if one day we're looking for an illustrator on Fiverr and then Karan comes up. <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to happen, man. <laughs> I really hope that doesn't happen. There are, <laughs> but just, you know, there are people who, who just for fun, you know, like but there are people who do like. It's um, like a guest appearance, you know. Like, <laughs> it's like you can you can see around maybe, the big stage, maybe or you can col- find him once once a year yeah. on Fiverr. Maybe it's more of a collaboration <laughs> with Fiverr. You yeah, know? I think I think that's no, no, more no, collaboration. Like, yeah, no, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it'll be really funny if one day it just pops up. Like, yeah. But I think you can, can actually already commission. Dollars? You can already commission people to do my style on Fiverr. Really? Yeah. Like someone's yeah. actually copying your style? It's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty rampant in illustration. Yeah. Um, Interesting. How do you yeah. Think about that? Interesting. Oh, um, God, how much time do you have? <laughs> I feel. I feel. I feel like that could be a whole episode, but I'm really intrigued by this. Yeah. Like, look, I think. I think it. I think there's different phases to it. Um, yeah. You know, I think that young artists have to. Um, God, I'm, I've got to be really careful what I say here. Um, <laughs> Turn the camera <laughs> No, I think I think there's a time and place to replicate things, and that is probably when you're learning. But when it gets to a point where you're earning money mm. off of someone's, oh, gotcha. mm. yeah, of course, yeah. you know, um, it's your work, signature it's style. Your style. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying me possessively. I'm just saying. Any 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 kind of um, plagiarism or yeah. and um, once you find out that the handle Instagram handle is not made by Karen, it's like <laughs> too close, man. Exactly. Too close. <laughs> you know, and I think I think to to a certain degree, mm-hmm. every designer and artist and illustrator or creative has had to deal with being on either the receiving or the giving end of the yeah. stick, where we've been put in situations, and I think. Um, I think those are all learning experiences, you know, because um, it's okay to be inspired by someone you admire. Yeah, as, as long as, as you make, make it your own. Making a buck out of mm. that, that's what it I, And look, and I, and I, I just again, I want to emphasize that like no one's going to get it right throughout, and I sure as hell haven't through yeah. my own career and through working, um, you know, at 
agencies as well and mm. um you know mm. but i think yeah. that um yeah i think that there is something that you learn to appreciate more as you get you know more involved in the scene or yep. more involved in the community and you're like mm. actually this is really realize you appreciate the amount of work and the nature of the work and yeah i think the the craft is 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 um it's it's what defines us right it's it's uh yeah. especially yeah. i don't know it's especially for, man well it's 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 a it's an ex this is why you know sometimes we get upset when we get negative yeah. feedback is because it's so the work is so personal mm. and i think that's more that's more upsetting is is not like oh someone's made a buck off it it's more that someone has um yeah it's someone's like sort of milked my i don't know there's something that's really personal to me and replicated it's like yo this is one of the things it that, is you it's an extension of you that's your work yeah exactly really so you, you can't help but feel like overly attached and obviously upset sometimes <laughs> yeah well it's interesting as well sometimes you, it's just really funny well when it happens you can look at it different ways really you can either think oh, yeah. it's really offensive some of it's really it's, funny it's, it's you know it's uh, it's nice that someone wants to copy my work you know if you were thinking it from that perspective yeah. too you know but it, it also goes to show that you have obviously created your own signature and I think you know would you would you I mean, yeah. uh, one yeah. thing that I, I've always uh, wondered is like that's a process right? sure like, that doesn't happen overnight was there ever a point where you were 100% confident that you have found that style yeah I think when I when I really started exploring pattern is when I found that I found a style that would keep me engaged and excited for a really long time and it did keep me excited okay. for a really long time and it still does um yeah because f up until the point that i started working mostly with patterns my style was really eclectic i was like jumping between mm. different treatments and different and that's uh, part of the process right mm. yeah and i it was interesting because up until then i was like i'm ne i'm like i'm just going to be a designer who doesn't have a style mm. and Not then really. i found a style and i was like oh of course as, as you were of course saying, as you were saying, saying. <laughs> exactly yeah, right. so anyway i have a style now yeah exactly i don't know what phase i'm faster, at now faster stronger yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so so you so you basically uh that that kind of goes back to a little bit to you know the project the quickies yes um was that kind of the beginning of it was oh, was that at the time where you were like I'm a designer, mm. I'm kind of doing this work. I'm not too sure where I want to go. What, yeah. what's, the, what's the incentive? Yeah, so the quickies were uh, from back in 2010, nine or ten. Yeah. So um, in, in ten seconds, can you explain what quickies? Are? Yeah, just so yeah. We don't go uh -huh. the round. Yeah, yeah, just before just before, before yeah, people think of jump to mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, 10 seconds okay daily illustration project set myself an hour time limit of creating one illustration a day for a year nice um, and, a bit of Love it, man. and <laughs> yeah right. and um, I think it came out of a couple of reasons firstly it was like I had started or returned to freelance okay after a while and was found myself either a with a lot of work and mm work that i didn't necessarily love doing yeah but did because i had to make ends meet and yeah, you gotta pay the bills man. absolutely and the the other reason was that um so so yeah one was like i wasn't making the work i wanted to make so this was a way for me to mm. reclaim some sort of like <laughs> you know i'm like Creative. yeah i'm still doing something for myself you went through a process mm -hmm. Mm. yourself like that but yeah mm. sorry carry on yeah so and then and then the other reason it's the was like been <laughs> I know, but, I'm like, but i want to hear i want to hear these like stories as well like <laughs> it'll happen man don't <laughs> worry happen, yeah. okay. and uh i think yeah the other was either then i didn't have enough work and i was like fuck i need to do like yeah. i gotta, gotta do something with the yeah. time that um yeah i've got and so i just started making something and like it was really fun because uh conceptually like challenged me to think really yeah. intensely 
and come up with funny puns or combining visually strong ideas. Oh, so it was meant to be funny as well. It was always intended to be lighthearted because an hour is not enough time no, to make anything. And I think the other thing is that like, makes me nervous already thinking right. about it. Like you only have one hour to produce yeah. something. Yeah, that's were you stay. very strict? I was. So yeah, it was like line work. Illustrator always because Illustrator is like my, I was the most okay. pr proficient with Illustrator. I was really fast in it, so I knew it was possible. Were, um, yeah. And yeah, line work. You stuck to those rules all the and time. I stuck to those rules, yeah. and it was a yeah. consistent series. And nice. You're like, you know, look, I said, I said, that's it. Yeah, whatever yeah. happens. Yeah, it's happens. like, and again, you. It made me be comfortable with saying, okay, this one was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there were some horrible puns. There were some really bad puns. I mean, I love puns. Man. I mean, they were yeah, but you don't <laughs> like puns that much. So that's like you're like you're ruining puns All for right. me. Yeah. Um, and then there were some really good ones. And then some days I was like, I can't think of anything. So what do I should I do? Like a letter or just do do something for the sake of doing it. And yeah. even those days were great because I still did something for me. Mm. Um, but I think out of that. I realized that I actually really like kind of these smile in the mind ideas where I combine two different objects or two ideas to create this metaphor. Um, yep. And, you know, while visually, you know, the style has changed, I still use like a lot of the principles from mm. that of in course. a lot of my work where, of course, yeah. you know, even now I'm like with the most recent, like more hyper-realistic stuff that I'm doing, mm. they would still very much work as quickies. Like, conceptually, mm. you know, they would still absolutely work with quick as quickies in line work because I'm still dealing with the same funny mm. or kind of smile in mind style ideas, which What do you are, design on this day in terms of software? Uh, usually use Cinema 4D, which is a 3D program. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, still use Illustrator a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you combine them, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, these programs are made to talk to each other. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, they shouldn't. I it's mean, you can use them. Progression, kind of. Yeah, thing. exactly. And yeah, me just wanting to find like easier ways to do something or yeah. ways to iterate faster. And you got into NFTs as well, right? Yeah. So like, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not touchy. Again, <laughs> how long do you have? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, food is coming, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be dictated by that, don't worry. Yeah, look, it was, um, it was a really strange time to be an artist last year. I think mm -hmm. that, um, you know, my background as a digital artist started from 2000 and, you know, four, five. Mm. Um, and I was part of these online art collectives and online art communities where we were already making digital art and putting them out in, as exhibitions, you know. Yeah. Um, so basically, we were already making NFTs, just not right. NFTs. Not with that title. No, no, no it's just a, it. It, not just it's just a digital release. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yeah, last time it was like oh, oh sorry, last year it was like there was this gold rush, you know. Yeah. And I think there were a few. There's, there's a lot of issues with it, you know. I think. Mm. Um, you know, on one hand, it was a really exciting premise where, you know, artists, digital artists especially, finally had a way to make money off their work, yeah. which was really cool. Yeah. Um, but there were also a lot of cons about it, you know, yeah. environmental. A lot of scams as well. A lot of scams. The audience also is, is a, you know, really interesting group, which who is not something, ooh, nice. Thanks. Um, thank you. The audience itself is also just like dramatically different from a traditional art audience, and and I think, yeah, it poses an interesting, interesting challenge. I feel like it's definitely like one of those situations where it's like watch this space and see what happens. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It's still very early, early days uh, for it to. Um, yeah. You know, in the greater scheme of things, I feel like it's just one of those things that it's really exciting, but the nature of it also allows for mm. a lot of uncertainty and scams and things is, that are, no, yeah. you know, like I'm not saying that it should have established parameters, yeah. but to a certain degree, it should be a little bit more control and easier. This is, this is the sad thing now, know. though. Sorry to interrupt, but like no, no, no. the thing I was trying to yeah, get at is now like nobody wants to hear the three letters NFT anymore <laughs> because it's just been like, 
dragged and scammed and there's like actual use cases for scenario uh, use case scenarios for nfts beyond just art a hundred like which and, are and i think great and I, which are actually the technology allows for so yeah much more and that. and the problem is like you know there's all these grifters and scam artists who've jumped on board and now it's like yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to use the phrase anymore, and yeah. it's and it's a shame. I get it. Like I get why people don't want to be associated with it. Um, yeah. But it's 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 almost like a disservice to like the mm. potential of the technology. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's 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 kind of shit as I well. Like, you know. You know, it's interesting too um, because it seems like that gold rush you were you were mentioning before kind of happen uh, because people didn't want to miss out on this new thing and therefore there was just this massive hype around it sure. uh, without really knowing what it was what mm. it meant um, I think you know you you know you kind of came from a, a little bit more of established uh, yeah uh, what, what would I what would I call that it's just you know you've been doing art for a while now you've been doing your illustrations for a while for, there was no need for you to kind of jump on this thing just for the sake of it yeah right? That's that's a good way of describing. It. I think um, I think I oh, <laughs> sorry, wow, I got that was amazing. <laughs> I think um, yeah, there's definitely in hindsight, you know, things I wish I'd done better mm. in at that time. Um, yeah, because I think I I bought into the hype as well, and mm. I think a lot of us did. Yeah, I I am um, yeah, I'm a bit like upset about it to mm. be honest. Mm. You know, I think that. Uh, yeah, I drank the Kool Aid, man. I mm. and I and I hate. I hate the idea, man. And, and I and I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm annoyed. Should about have started the episode with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, but I think that's a good way to wrap it up. But I, yeah, yeah, uh, we could talk about that for a really long time. Yeah, it's a whole episode. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other episode. episode of just yeah. NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Thank you guys so much. It's been yeah, such man. a pleasure. No, man. I feel like I've never really. Here, so we have a uh, taco de pescado, uh, cheese, uh, more cheese over there, <laughs> tostada or something. Yeah, do you like cheese? You got lactose, honey? I love cheese. Right, That's good, man. Let's but, dig in. Uh, thank thank you for coming. Uh, and everybody else, thank you. See you on the next one. Thanks Ooh, for tuning in. See you guys.